Okie dokie. Okay, so today I'm going to share something with you that may change your life forever. Uh, I know it changed my life forever, and I'd like to think that by the end of my presentation today, you'll agree with this, and you'll understand how you can have the power to change your life in the most positive ways with the promise of a better life later, a happier existence, and a well-balanced self, more so than we have right now. Can anybody guess what I'm talking about if I haven't told you what the theme of my project is? No? Okay. This is the fancy part. Here I go again. Talking about neuroplasticity. And we're talking about why neuroplasticity is important to mental health and to emotional intellect. And essentially today I would like to try to convince you of the power of neuroplasticity and how we can use neuroplasticity in our daily lives to improve not only our psychological, neurological synapses connections, but our overall mental health and well-being. So neuroplasticity is an organic engine of chemical reaction in the human brain. Uh, that gives us the ability to rewire ourselves based on neurological responses to stimuli like environmental uh, or uh, emotional or conscious or sociological changes. So why is this important? Well, it's important for a lot of reasons, and I'll get to that in a second. Right now, let's just talk about a couple of facts. So the facts, as Pinky and the Brain are helping me uh, state here, is... Uh, Actually, I'm going to come up with this part. Um, what is mental health? So, mental health is a condition that regards uh, our, psychology, our psychological and emotional well being. So, also, what is emotional intellect? Well, it's the ability to recognize and understand and manage your own emotions. Not only that, it's the ability to recognize other people's emotions and have a respect for them. Now, neuroplasticity, by the most scientific and technical uh, uh, logistical phrasing, or whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, neuroplasticity is the brain's capacity to adapt and change, uh, to literally rewire itself synaptically based on uh, you know your interactions with your environment. So now we're going to talk about something that people might not consider uh, a you know a mental health issue, and that is what is ADHD. So ADHD is important because this is my example of how neuroplasticity helped change my life. So people can understand what neuroplasticity is. Uh, in terms of ADHD, or what ADHD is in terms of neuroplasticity, is it's hyper attention deficit disorder. So a person that has ADHD has differences in how the function of their neurology operates. Generally, it's seen as a mental health issue. For myself, I see it as a step in evolution because it allows us, with proper focus, to operate at a higher frequency or level of thought. However, the problem with this is that in schools today, kids aren't being put aside and being taught differently and being able to learn how to take advantage of the extra energy that they have and the way that their, you know, the neurodevelopment type is occurring within their brain. So children that are born with ADD are often overwhelmed by thought and therefore have trouble learning to communicate. So it's not that they're not highly intelligent, it's they have a learning disability and an inability to communicate thought. So although ADD causes impairment, it's actually recently been proven uh, by a guy's name who I can't pronounce, but a German psychologist, in his opinion that ADD causes impairment, particularly in modern society, but many children with it tend to do better than others when they're able to pay attention to things that they like. So when the focus is on what you want to do for yourself, you're going to do better. Now, neuroplasticity doesn't just apply to people that have, you know, um, I would say mental health issues that you can directly relate to. It can also help with depression. It can also help with understanding you know, emotional distress. If you're like me, you're emotionally challenged. Sometimes you don't understand why people act the way that they do. Well, learning to deal with situations that you might otherwise run away from over time, these you accumulate. And that's when neuroplasticity begins to kick in. And I'll give you a perfect example. Today, I was faced with an environmental challenge and a sociological challenge in that I left my house with 30 minutes to get here and did not want to let myself down because I needed to get this mark for this class. And when I got my vehicle, the car battery was dead. Yes. So there's two challenges that I had to face. And you know, in the past, I would have just used that as an excuse to walk away. Except for this time I didn't. Because understanding the value of what it means 
to fight against the things that are hard that we come up against. And these are things I like to call evolutionary challenges. So they're things we come across all day long. Anyway, not to get too far off track. The reason why this is important to me is I've always battled ADD. And you know, I always thought, or sorry, I've always battled ADHD, though today I stand here before you a changed man. Because even though until recently I wasn't able to fully understand my opponent, I was trying to flush it out. And you know, using the words flush it out, that's an interesting turn of phrase because it implies awareness and a desire to change. And those are key elements to being able to apply you know, a knowledge of neuroplasticity to your life, because that's what it comes down to. It comes down to conscious awareness of emotion and the ability to want a fight against the things that we want to run away from. So, you know, first to understand the problem, uh, we have to understand any emotional dysfunction that's been created with it over time, and secondly, a desire to understand a conscious effort, effortful action to be taken on our part. And without that, neuroplasticity is not going to be able to take place. And I mean, ultimately, this is a natural process that is occurring in the brain all the time. It doesn't matter whether you think about it or not. But the more that you become aware or conscious of it, the more you're going to strengthen those neural pathways, and the more you're going to feel okay about um, you know, social encounters, or you know, your intellectual work, or who you are as a person, and how you fit into the community around you. And I think the more that we all do this for ourselves, it's a matter of we can't change the world, but we can change ourselves. And if we all change ourselves so we get what we want to be happier, ultimately, we can be left with a better place to live. And that really all comes from you know, taking advantage of this new knowledge of neuroplasticity and you know, how we can maximize uh, its occurrence in our neurology as we live our daily lives. So, uh, how do I know this? Because I've done it myself. This right here, that's all me. Two years ago, I couldn't do this. Everything. That music, those graphics, that design, the motion, the animation, everything. Right? That took 16 years of fighting. 16 years of being laughed at because I was trying to do too many things at once. But ultimately, over time, and coming to terms with who I was, and eventually realizing what I was doing, taking control, and ultimately coming to learn more about neuroplasticity, I was really able to get my shit together. And I was able to be, do something that most people will say can't be done. Philosophers will tell you, you don't have a choice in life, you are you know, what you are given. And in my case, at the age of 20, I decided I didn't like who I was, and that's when I started you know, on this path right here that I'm sharing with you now. And for a lot of you, you're coming from a lot better situation and place than I am. So to monetize on this and make it part of your life is only going to be a really great advantage to who you are and what you have to bring to our humanity as you progress through your life. I'd like to thank everybody for listening. <laughs> Questions? Thank you very much. Let me take your questions. Got one. Oh, I see you, Zach. Um, so, with the thing you were talking about with ADHD, uh -huh. were you saying that given the opportunity, a child with ADHD can perform better? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I've done it myself and, and I've witnessed it in other people. And like the German psychologists have brought up, they're starting to realize it's a matter of focus. You know, it's like for me, I excel in my philosophy, or sorry, I excel in my psychology and I do pretty good in this class. But in my philosophy class, I lose interest, and I don't do that well. Because to me, it's just all arguments and semantics that are going back and forth between people who really don't have a clue and are trying to piece it together for themselves. Yeah. So I fight there for my interest, but in my other courses, I excel because my focus is interest, and that helps me control my ADHD. So I think taking children aside and teaching them in a way by giving them a little bit more time, you know, that other students later they're going to produce at a higher rate. Okay. And yeah, so you said that we are coming through from a lot of bad experiences and stuff like that. Before mm -hmm. you know that you may have a ADHD. Yep. So you've been bullied. That's why. That's how you say that, or like people like. Oh no no! I've had ADHD since I was a child. See, here's the thing: is when you see me here now. Most people would be like, oh sure, he still has ADHD because he's fidgety or he's whatever. But when I was a child, I used to like run around the classroom like fucking eating glue. You know, the teacher had to tie me up. I can remember cutting myself out of the skipping rope once. And I mean, of course, they shouldn't do that because that's child abuse, but that was back in 1982, right? When it wasn't a big deal. 
But so, so that's the difference. The other thing too is the inability to express yourself. So I battled that for a very long time, right? Because for me, I've been discovering the universe and existence for a long time. Just because we use different words to express things doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't have the right idea. It just means they're not expressing that idea to you properly because they weren't able to take advantage of the same system of learning that you were, right? So for me, being back in school is the last step of my life where I am trying to you know, correct what it is that I'd learned in years before I could really express it or understand it. So yeah, and my life wasn't that horrible, but I'll tell you this. Uh, it's interesting because, and this relates, I think, to neuroplasticity. If you look at the lives of people who become successful and who we idolize and things like that, they often have tragic lives. They often, you know, go through so much for our humanity and get nothing back, including respect. But the reality is, is that they're able to do it because of who they are and what they want to do, and their ability to do it comes from a greater need, a, a larger drive, and ultimately a greater interaction with the stimulus of the environment, the world we live around us. So they've been exploiting the neuroplasticity, you know, long before we even became aware of it. Sorry, that maybe went off a little bit. Anybody else? Sure. Yeah, thanks very much. If I've heard about neuroplasticity in relation to other conditions or um, challenges, so but I hadn't particularly heard it attached to ADHD, so that was interesting. And also it made me think of Amy Cuddy's story, remember the beginning of term, how she basically rewired her brain. Uh -huh. yep. And that is definitely because of neuroplasticity that she was able to do that. Remember she had the accident. Oh, absolutely. Damage. There was, was still able to rewire. Uh, absolutely, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, <laughs> The ADHD is my take on it, right? But as you were talking about, there's also another woman from England who had schizophrenia. And what actually led me to realize that I had done this for myself was watching her talk about how she went from nearly drilling a hole in her head to let the demons out to actually being able to have her doctorate be on stage, be discussing the issues of her life and be completely healthy. And you know, to me, that was very interesting because uh, her claim was that she, like the other woman, had dealt with her emotional demons and in doing so and rewired her brain. This led me to go to my first year's psychology book and immediately in reading it, I realized that dopamine was responsible in higher levels for schizophrenia. And that suddenly, maybe it was possible that this person was able to, through neuroplasticity, rewire the dopamine uh, centers or how the neurotransmitter dopamine was being routed through her brain through the emotional conflict that she dealt with. Because that's reminiscent of everything I went through as a child and stuff, and, it, it, and that's what neuroplasticity is. It's not something that is only being applied to one disease or one way of making you smarter. And in fact, recent studies show that a lot of the games that they promote for neuroplasticity that are supposed to make you smarter don't work at all. Because what neuroplasticity is, is the ability for neural pathways to either rewire or strengthen themselves and their synaptic connections literally based on the stimulus that you interact with in your daily life. The more stimulus that you interact with that relates to who it is that you want to be. So the more you try, even when you fail, eventually you succeed. And that is neuroplasticity working within the brain to essentially do what it did for me, which is I went 15 years trying to play guitar and literally was good enough for people to be like, yeah, you can play guitar, you just got eight songs, to uh, one day just starting to play piano, bass, guitar, writing uh, classical um, music that is modern contemporary, electric music like that, all these different things. And the reason why was because I never gave up and I kept going and eventually I got through whatever emotional blocks I was dealing with as well. I had rewired logical parts of my brain that had never been trained to understand or hear music. And you know, eventually after 15, 16 years, the last two years of my life has been pretty, pretty insane. Anyway, the point of this was that you guys can all do this for yourselves. It doesn't matter who you are or what talent you have. You just have to believe in yourself and think positively about the events of your life. And you know, in dealing with them, even when they're hard, you're going to increase your brain's ability to uh, be healthier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here I go.